We are joined today by Gary Frost from AMD's software team. Gary? AMD released a technology preview of AppArepi last year and is now open sourcing the project. Let's talk about the open source release. First, explain what AppArepi is. Sure. Uh, AppArepi is actually two things. It's a Java API for expressing uh, data power algorithms in the Java programming language. And secondly, at runtime, it's a sort of component that allows us to take the Java bytecode, um, the artifact of compiling a Java source program, converting that into OpenCL on the fly and then executing that OpenCL on a GPU device if one is available on the target platform. Does AppArepi convert the Java source to OpenCL? No, so obviously we, we tried to avoid in, uh, modifying the users of the developer's uh, tool chain, their compiler chain, so we don't want to get involved in that. So we actually take the bytecode from the runtime system and do that. So if, of course the Java compiler creates bytecode uh, in its classes and that's what gets deployed to a, an end user when they're running their code and it's that bytecode that we convert to OpenCL. We actually do a similar thing to the Java, in the Java world, there's, there are tools like Moco and JAD, which can take bytecode and convert it back into source code, so you could take a look at what a class that you didn't have source for. Essentially, we're doing the same thing, but instead of creating Java code from it, we're actually creating OpenCL from those fragments of code. Are there occasions when you can't convert to OpenCL? Uh, and what happens if you don't have OpenCL platform support? Yeah, so, this, so the, the great thing here is because we started off with Java code, which was compiled into, you know, fragments of code that we can run in, data, in a data parallel form, we can actually just take those, that same code and execute it in a Java thread pool. So the same code that somebody wrote that could have been run on a GPU can also run in the thread pool um, in, in the Java world. So this gives, this sort of extends the Java notion of write once and run anywhere, where we're actually saying, well, not only can we run in your Java virtual machine, but given the correct environment, the right configuration, we can actually run on your GPU device. Can the Java developer expect to take just any Java code and run it on the GPU? Uh, no, unfortunately, that, that would be ideal. Um, unfortunately, what, what, what we have to do is we have to take the bytecode and we have to convert it to OpenCL. So we're kind of constrained as to the sort of the code that we can generate, the OpenCL code we're able to generate from the bytecode. That constrains us to using sort of primitive arrays and uh, low-level constructs. Um, so we can't, for example, use Java classes wherever we want to. But a lot of code, um, will will be convert will be convertible and we can convert it um, and generally it's the same sort of transformations or refactoring that you, somebody may be expected to perform if they wanted to generate code that's going to run in a thread pool. So we if somebody is refactoring their code to run in multiple threads, they will perform very similar changes in order to get to app or appy. What kind of applications are we talking about? So of course we're looking for um, data parallel algorithms in the sort of the sort of domains that we've been seeing a sort of financial, uh, some scienti scientific applications and the sort of algorithms we're looking at are things that are compute intensive on large data sets and of course we're expecting the code to be uh, data independent that means we can run run we can run the algorithm many many times over the same data but there aren't dependencies between the the execution chains so it's, it, you have to think about it as if we were many running many many threads maybe thousands of threads if you think about it that way we, we want to make sure that the compute doesn't have data dependencies or compute dependencies on each other Okay. Uh, can you give me some examples of some of the applications that might be, take advantage of this? Sure, yeah. So in, in the financial domain, we've kind of seen this in sort of, sort of Black Shoals type simulations or sort of Monte Carlo type, type simulations. And in the sort of scientific domain or sort of physics simulation, you know, there's a classic n-body type, type problem. Um, and really we're looking for these, these problems which sort of break down as to being doing a lot of compute on a lot of data at the same time. And again, it's a parallel execution that is the key. Okay. How does AppArepi fit in with AMD's Fusion architecture? Uh, so it fits in very well because, of course, um, as, as we sort of mentioned earlier, we're, you know, we're using OpenCL as our intermediate uh, language we're generating on the fly. Um, and OpenCL itself, in order to get code to run on the GPU, uh, generally the, the, the programming cycle is you take your data and you move it to the GPU device, you take your compute, you move it to the, the GPU device, you perform your compute, and then you take your data back. Of course, at the moment, whilst we have discrete graphics comp and CPU components, the transfer cost of getting the data from the local memory next to the CPU to the GPU memory is a tax that everyone's paying during that execution time. Um, as APUs become more prevalent, um, some of those costs can go down. So of course, uh, the, first of all, the, the distance we have to travel itself to move the data in, in the case of uh, some of the current APU devices is a lot smaller, and the, the data transfer rates are higher, but maybe down the line 
where you may be able to get CPUs and, and uh, GPUs sitting in the same silicon that are sharing the same memory space, in which case the copying of data, that overhead, will drop considerably. So, and Gary, do you think uh, more algorithms will benefit from OpenCL and AppRappy as APU adoption increases? Yes, because uh, I think that as more APU devices are out there, people want to, are going to want to take advantage of the compute uh, available to them. And, and I think the Java programming language is a great place. There's lots of people already programming Java. It's a, it's a very popular language, probably one of the most popular languages on the planet. So bringing the ability to do GPU compute and the Java language to these devices which are going to enable more efficient transfer of data around between the CPU half and the GPU half of the same device, I think uh, makes it a very exciting area for future compute. All right, so you mentioned earlier that all OpenCL developers need to write host code to transfer data. The Apple Appy developers also have to write this code. I know, we're actually kind of lucky. So one of the advantages we have, because of course we're looking at the bytecode in order to be able to generate OpenCL, Whilst we're looking at that bytecode, we can also analyze it to determine what the access patterns are. So where a normal OpenCL developer would be required to, to know that their code is transferring a particular buffer to the device, performing the compute and bringing it back, because we're actually analyzing the bytecode, we know that. So therefore, the behind the scenes, the, the Java runtime can actually make that decision and make sure that the data is in the right place at the right time. AMD is releasing AppRappy to the open source community. Can you explain why AMD is doing this and what kind of license will be used for it? Okay, so, so of course uh, AMD is very, very interested in getting as many people using GPU devices for compute as possible. And I think uh, putting AppRappy into the open source, especially in such a large community like the Java community, sort of brings uh, GPU computing to a much wider audience. And I think it's in sort of AMD's interest to do that. Secondly, I think it, it's a lot easier to you know, AMD's philosophy is generally to embrace open standards and to push things out. And I think this is just a way that we can kind of seed uh, a sort of new community around Java and GPU programming. AMD released the, the, the there's some JNI code, some C++ code, and some Java code in order to get this out there. And it's been put under a BSD license. So it's a very friendly license for, um, so, you know, for everyone to use. There's, there's very few restrictions on it. And hopefully we, we'll be able to seed a bunch of projects and get a lot of people to both use it and also to contribute back to the project. Okay, is there anything new in this open source release uh, as compared to the original technology preview? Yeah, we, we added a few things. So we had some feedback actually from the community when we released the, the pre-release. And so some of, the some of the new features that we've added are sort of targeted at sort of ease of use. Again, we're trying to make sure that this is a technology that Java developers can, can use easily. And so we we took some common use cases and made sure that there were Java patterns or patterns we could use that would support that. We also realized that um, whilst earlier we talked about um, automatically transferring buffers backwards and forwards between the device was the easiest approach for Java developers when we did that automatically for them. We also realized for certain algorithms, it's actually beneficial for the user to take charge because they really know what's going on and they know that they can avoid a particular transfer at certain times. And so we actually handed a little more control back to the user so we call it the, sort of like the, the super user, or the expert user might want to take control of the buffer management. So we allow them to do that. And I think the third and probably most interesting part is for us to try to embrace Java developers' use of objects. Of course, people have been learning object-oriented programming. And in some respects, data parallel programming is sort of in, on, a, on a different plane. And so what we tried to do was we tried to allow Java developers to use the Java objects they're used to. We added a new feature so that um, AppRappy can now access arrays of Java objects. Um, and what it actually does here is, if you have an array of Java objects and you're accessing fields, then in the background, AppRappy will work this out and it will extract those, just those fields into parallel arrays on your behalf and ship them to the device. Then after the compute, it will bring it back and put it, pre put it back into the, real, the original objects. So the Java developer doesn't have to do that manually. And so if I was interested in finding AppRappy, where would I go to, to find it? Sure. So if you go to uh, code.google.com, there's a project out there. So it's code.google.com slash p slash AppRappy, A-P-R-A-P-I. And um, also on amdsdeveloper.com, there's a page dedicated to AppRappy there. And we've cross-linked both pages. So if you go to one, you can find the other and, and vice versa. And you'll find the source code there, for, you know, the C and the the Java source code for AppRappy itself is there. Also some samples, some examples, and some documentation um, to walk you through how to get started.